We've all heard of Alfred Wagner's 1912 theory of Pangaea, or continental drift, which though rejected by the scientific community until the 1950s, is now the basis of the theory of plate tectonics. We've also all played square pegs as a child, where we found out the hard way, although a diamond is pretty close to a square, a diamond is not a square. The same problem arises when we look at Pangaea. That is close, but that is not a perfect fit. But when we start to look under the Atlantis, or Atlantic Ocean, at the shapes of the Challenger Ridge, Connecting Ridge, and Dolphin Ridge, a remarkable thing happens. While historians and archaeologists carry on pretending that Atlantis was just a worldwide mythological place or legend, it doesn't take more than a quick comparison of Plato's Atlantis, brought down by Solon, and this sunken landmass in the Atlantic Ocean to question why they can't see the blaringly obvious. In Solon's account of the Atlantic island, it was first settled by a godlike man named Poseidon. We call him the god of the sea, but never question why he is always depicted holding a trident or a farming pitchfork, or why he's riding horses instead of dolphins. Solon claimed that a great nation power came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean, and that back in those days, the Atlantic was still navigable by ship, hinting that in his time it was not and that there was an island situated in front of the straits called the Pillars of Heracles, which we now call the Straits of Gibraltar. This island was larger than Libya and Asia put together. It was the way to other islands, and from the islands you might pass through the whole of the opposite continent which surrounded the true ocean, claiming the Mediterranean Sea within the Strait of Heracles is only a harbor, having a narrow entrance, but the other is a real sea, and the surrounding land may be most truly called a continent. Showing Solon had knowledge of the Americas on the other side of the Atlantic already in 630 BC. Solon claimed the Atlantean Empire not only ruled its own island continent, but also as far as Libya, Europe, Egypt, and Tyrrhenia which is central Italy. Pretty specific geography for a myth. And on the side toward the sea, and in the center of the whole island, there was a plain which is said to have been the fairest of all plains, very fertile, just as we see sunken beneath the ocean today. Solon described the plain. It was rectangular, and for the most part straight and oblong, and what it wanted of the straight line followed the line of the circular ditch. The depth and width and length of this ditch were incredible, and gave the impression that such a work, in addition to so many other works, could hardly have been wrought by the hand of man. It received the streams which came down from the mountains from above, meaning from the north, and straight canals were cut into the plain, and by them they brought down the wood from the mountains to the city. 
The whole country was described as being very lofty and precipitous on the sides of the sea, but the country immediately about and surrounding the city was a level plain, itself surrounded by mountains which descended toward the sea. Atlantis is smooth and even, but of an oblong shape, and the whole region of the island to the south is sheltered from the northern mountains. And in the center of the capital island, there was a race course of a stadium in width and length, allowed to extend all around the island for horses to race in. But afterward, there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of rain, all your warlike men in a body sunk into the earth, and the island of Atlantis in a like manner disappeared and was sunk beneath the sea. And that is the reason why the sea in those parts was so impassable and impenetrable in Solon's time because there was such a quantity of shallow mud in the way, and this was caused by the subsidence of the island. Back in 2011, researchers believe they found the lost city of Atlantis in the mud flats of Alicante, southern Spain. Missed it by that much. A dozen PhDs and two million dollars in research grants between you? And not one of you morons bothered to read the source of the legend or read Donnelly's Atlantis? No, by all means, let us do it for you, for free. The truth is, by the 1880s, Deep sea sonar had already been taken of the Atlantis ocean floor by the U.S. Dolphin, German Gazelle, and British Hydra, Porcupine, and Challenger, resulting in the revelation of a great elevation reaching from a point on the coast of the British Islands southwardly to the coast of South America at Cape Orange and then east to Africa. Just as Solon said, Due west of the Straits of Gibraltar or Heracles, we find the last remnants of Atlantis today, the Azores Islands, which are the very tops of the sunken northern Atlantis mountains described by Solon on what is known now as Dolphin Ridge, a.k.a. Atlantis. Solon described the white, black, and red stones they quarried and built with, and those same red and white stones are still found on the black lava rocks of the Azores to this day. The powers that be have known about Atlantis for at least 140 years, but have been keeping it a secret from the general public. Stay tuned for part two when we discuss why?